I've been trying to collect one of every single GeForce FX series graphics cards for a little while now. As of right now, I have to just get the 5500 and the 5800 series GPUs. Now the 5500, the only reason I don't have it is because while it's common, people want way too much money for it. On the other hand, the reason why I don't have the 5800 series card is, well, pretty obvious if you're a collector or retro tech enthusiast. They're very, very hard to find, and not only that, they're extremely expensive. So if you want to get your hands on an FX 5800 series GPU, there's kind of three ways to do it. The easiest and most expensive and obvious way is to just accept that the prices are 500 Canadian or so, and buy an FX 1500 once they pop up. But if you're more sensible and a little bit more creative, you can explore Quadro alternatives. There's actually two. So you can start with the FX 2000 series, which is probably the easiest GPU to convert to a 5800 Ultra, but in some cases, you still may need to come up with a beefier cooling solution. But this card is literally an FX 5800. So even if you didn't want an Ultra, you just wanted a 5800 series, you could completely, totally flash this card to a 5800 and it'll be perfect. You'll have no problems and you'll be able to use the card without any issues. Next up is the more difficult and more creative solution, which is the FX 1000 series. This is basically an FX 5200 Ultra, but it has its texture compression engine along all the other features of the NV3 5800 core. So this time we're not skimping out on anything. Now, what we are actually truthfully skimping out on is 25 megahertz on the core and the RAM. However, the core is still the same as what's in a 5800 Ultra. So with a beefier cooling solution and a little bit more voltage, you should have no problem running at 500 megahertz like a 5800 Ultra or even 400 megahertz as a 5800. And this kind of goes for the RAM as well. I believe most Quadro FX 1000 GPUs have the exact same 500 megahertz Samsung GDDR2 RAM found on the 5800 Ultra. Now the problem here is how do we cool this so that it runs at ultra speeds? And I don't really know because today's video, we're actually gonna be focusing on turning this into a regular 5800, not an ultra, but I do want to experiment with ultra speeds and see what we can come up with, what the temperatures are like, because my cooling solution for the core is very good, but as you'll see, my cooling solution for the RAM is a one which, if you've seen my videos, is very similar to something we've just taken a look at. So come with me. Let's 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 start this adventure. So here we have our Quadro FX 1000 GPU. Um, really, not much to say about it. We've kind of looked at a couple pictures of it already. Uh, what's cool about it? is that if you look on the back, you can definitely tell this is a 5800 board layout. Look at this, all along here, that's where the uh, the memory heatsink would have gone. But of course this one doesn't have it because it's a severely crippled 5800. But we're about to change that. First, I gotta test it, so be right back. Alrighty, so as you can see, the driver is installed and the card seems to be working in 2D mode so far. So as you can take a look here, 300 megahertz on the core and 300 on the memory. Now I believe for 5800 ultra speeds, we need to hit 500 on the core and the memory. I have no doubts about the core, but as I said, I don't know about the memory. We'll investigate that further. But first, I'm going to run 3D Mark really quickly. And once I'm done that, I will get to the part where we flash the 5800 image and we'll just go from there and see what happens. One thing I want to touch on very quickly is that despite running these tests at 1280 by 1024 which is this monitor's native resolution, I've been really impressed with the results as the card stands right now. And it kind of dawned on me that this is an FX5200 Ultra with a, I believe, 25 megahertz slower core and memory clock. But yet up to about nature, not a single test was running under 50 FPS, whereas with the 5200 Ultra, we got some kind of abysmal results when we ran 3D Mark. Um, but either way, I know we just talked about that 5200 Ultra recently, and so this card is essentially a 5200 Ultra with its texture compression engine. So it kind of goes to show you how much of a hit that card took when Nvidia decided to rip out that kind of functionality. All right, so I've gone ahead and flashed the card with the changes I want to make. 
I do have to change one little irrelevant thing once we're done here. But now comes the hardware side. Now that it's successfully flashed and I quickly verified it, um, I need to do this pretty quickly as well because the card's still warm. We are going to put this on. Okay, nice. As well as these. You guys may remember these. These are FX5200 Ultra memory coolers and they will fit just nicely on this. So, without further ado, let's try and get this thing apart as soon as possible. Seriously expect me to use this crappy integrated heat spreader? Nuh uh. No way. For this, we will be using the exposed eye itself along with this Zalman cooler. I had a little bit of a scare because initially this Zalman cooler was not fitting. But as it turns out, this is the bolt pattern or the whatever pattern you're gonna have to use. I was trying to fit it here and here and it wasn't working. Well, it turns out I gotta use these. So that's exactly what I'm gonna do. First though, we gotta get some RAM heatsink set up. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, I'm actually gonna go ahead and clean the RAM modules very quickly. Just wipe them down. Fingerprints, dust, or debris off them. <laughs> right, looking good. So we're gonna go ahead and we're going to stick on just a little bit of thermal compound here on all four dims, or banks, or whatever like so. Looking at the user's manual here for this, it looks like we should be putting clear spacers here, springs shifted down like that, and then those rubber grommets there. Now mind you, the rubber grommets do not actually hit the bottom on our card, so I don't quite know what that's going to mean for us, but I guess we'll find out. I don't care what you say about my thermal paste application skills. Comments need not apply. Alright, here we go. So you'll see what I mean momentarily but we should be able to plunk this on like so and it's on there nice so as I said you can see that our rubber grommets or standoffs here don't actually meet the motherboard so I guess we're just gonna have to be very very careful when we tighten these screws not to put too much pressure on that we crack the die. All right, here we go. Slight change of plans. The included Zalman clear uh, thingies didn't fit too big. So I took some junk ones I had lying around and I had to cut one of them to get it to fit, but they should be okay. So 
let's get started on fastening all the screws here and hope for the best. Alrighty, so this is the end result. Now hopefully it works, we'll have to test out the thermals, but here it is. I think it looks pretty snazzy. Very interesting looking card. I made sure to be very careful, there's no bend in the card, it's not a banana card. Um, as for tightening, my advice to you is tighten it very, very like in the weakest way you can with your hands until your weak way doesn't allow the, the nuts to get tightened anymore. I think that's the perfect spot for this. Um, as I said, it's still difficult to say because our little grummets here are not touching the motherboard. So, But if you have a look, although it's hard to pick up on the camera, you can definitely tell the thermal paste has spread, so hopefully it's an even distribution. Only time will tell now. So why don't we go ahead and put this in the computer and see what happens. Now one of the drawbacks of doing it, at least with this cooler, our Zelman cooler, is we have to worry about fan headers now, which is kind of annoying, especially in older computers, they don't really have that many fan headers. But in this case, I'm just using a little splitter here. Um, it's only temporary. I would recommend something more along the lines of this if you do plan on running it long term. This is just one of those Molex cables that splits off into a fan header as well. But I'm lazy and I would rather just have all my fans running and not dealing with extra cables. So yeah, but here it is sitting nice and pretty in the case. I'm really excited to try it out. Alright, I made you guys wait this long. Let's see what happens. So we're currently loading into Windows now and as you can tell we're back down to 16 colors with 640 by 480 or whatever the default resolution is. Why is that? Well, as you just saw, because we flashed the straps and the device ID using the existing Quadro BIOS, I flashed it to be detected as an FX5800 now. So we need to install a new driver. Now the nice thing about this is that it will be using the NVIDIA GeForce drivers versus the Quadro drivers. Whether or not that makes a huge difference, I don't know. Personally, from my experience, it hasn't really made that much of a difference, but at least I can sleep comfortably at night knowing that this is detected as a 5800, which is the goal of this project. Alrighty, so we're back in Windows again after a restart, and you can see now we're showing up as an FX 5800 Ultra, of course. Uh, the GPU clocks are now 400 and 400 respectively for FX 5800 speeds. And I actually did a custom little tweak where I enabled a 2D um, core performance mode where basically in 2D applications we're only going to be running at 300 megahertz, which is what the card just runs at all the time from the factory. There is no performance bumping. I also enabled some throttling as well just in case we hit the crazy default throttle temperature of like 140 Celsius. Anyways, hopefully it never gets there, but the fact that we're sitting at a cool 32 degrees right now it's pretty good news, I'm happy about that. Hopefully that improves a little bit as the thermal compound settles in, but the real test now is to run some benchmarks, monitor the temperature, monitor the performance, and once we're done that and we verified we can achieve stable temps, then it's time to fire up cool bits and see if we can turn this into an ultra. Highly doubt it, but I'm curious to find out. So now that we've established that we can run at 5800 speeds, it was time to try 5800 ultra speeds, starting with the part I was most confident about, the core. We had no problems running stably at 500 megahertz, and we noticed a little bit of a performance increase, which was very nice. Fortunately, the RAM was a bit of a different story. Uh, I couldn't even get cool bits to hold it stably, and it was running kind of hot a little bit during our tests, but um, I don't think we'll be able to run this at ultra speeds for the RAM unless we had an improved cooling solution for the memory unfortunately. And I think it also probably needs a little bit more voltage to stably run at effectively 1000 MHz. Screen in the video with a benchmark, I'm going to compare the FX5800 that we just created with an FX5900 XT which is what succeeded the 5800 series and notably the XT is the lowest of low. So let's take a quick look.
And there you have it. We've now walked out with a working FX 1500, which is really, really cool. Of course, the FX 5900 XT in almost every case does beat it, but that's because the 1500 in of itself was a flop, and I don't need to get into that. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video. I do have different kinds of content lined up coming soon, so please stay tuned for more.